Yeah, another 20. <laughs> the sound of the heavy door swinging open jolted me out of my restless nap. Hello. It's time for you to get to work again. I shut upright and I unconsciously shuffled backwards. He's back. I came back. <gasps> oh! That scared the shit out of me. That scared me! Who's that? Michael! Before I could say anything, you are so... And some oh my gosh. Before I could say anything, two huge guards entered the room behind me. So even if I were to get the door open, that's probably who I would see outside. They made him look even shorter, but somehow the air of malice came directly from him. You need to get dressed. Dressed? My own voice sounded foreign to me. I realized I hadn't spoken in days. He threw a wad of black netting in front of me. Netting? Netting. Yes, dressed. I grabbed and examined the wad of material. At. Is that what it said? Ah. Uh. It unfurled into some sort of bodysuit made entirely of fishnet. Oh, netting. I'm playing with underwear that looked much too small for me, so you know. I looked back up to him. Surely he doesn't. He sighed with an obvious annoyance. We're on a schedule. You can get dressed. I'll have to do it for you. I'll have them do it for you. I mean, do I get a choice? I looked at the pair of goons and... I mean, to be honest, I want to see what would happen if they did it. I'm not wearing this. Do it yourself. He... <laughs> he motioned lazily toward me and the guards immediately went into action. Ooh. Rough hands grabbed me and shoved me down to the floor with brutal speed. The rest of my madness came out <laughs> as a wheeze as I was pressed into the concrete. I could hardly get out a yelp of surprise as my underwear was yanked off. My perfectly fine, fitting underwear. The new pair was pulled on almost as quickly. <laughs> the rest of the outfit was pulled over me with the same mechanical efficiency. I was entirely powerless to do anything about it. Beautiful. Then I was pulled to my feet. I winced as my weight fell on my still injured soul. It distracted me from my arms being pulled behind my back. A click and the familiar weight of metal sh- ah! Metal shackles weighed my wrists out. I hate those. You're lucky you're going on camera right away. What? Huh? Ew! What's wrong with his face? <laughs> <laughs> or I would have let them do a lot more than dress you. Now come on. We don't have any more time. The guard pushed me forward and out of the room. I was walked down a few dark hallways before we stopped at another heavy door. Let me back in this ugly ass, dingy ass room as I was pushed through into the darkness. I smelled old blood. Uh, no. I was pulled to my knees below it. Not this room, not this room. I couldn't stop the panic from buzzing in my brain. My feet were shackled to the floor. Please, not again. My wrist. Shackles were attached to the chain. That'll be on. He has goons. Heavy footsteps left the room and the door thudded shut with terrifying finality. Finality. There <laughs> was an awful voice in my head repeating the same thing over and over. You're not going to survive this again. I have 70 sanity. Do not underestimate me. No. He let me go without waiting for an answer. Then he tapped at the keyboard. He rolled his shoulders and sighed. Then he straightened. 
Hello, my dear friends, and welcome back. Sorry for the interruption, but my file messed up while I was recording show two. So I have to give a small recap so that we can continue because the video cuts off right here and it continues from show three, from the start of show three. So basically, the guards, they dress you if you refuse to dress yourself. Moving on, he uses a, solder, a soldering gun on you, basically, like, carves something in your skin through with fire, whatever, with heat. After that, he does not say for work action, which wouldn't have been in the video either way, because why would it? Plus, it was a pretty big part of the show anyways, so. Then chat sees that your eye is pretty f***ed up, so they're like, yo, you should probably remove that shit. So what does he do? He removes it. If you ask him to, but either way, he does it anyway. Because, I mean, it's his stream. After you move the eye, that's it. basically it for you. I'm so happy to see you all again. And I've got quite the treat for you today. Our lovely star, Degenerate, is back for an encore. And this time, I thought it would be fun. His hand brushed over my chest possessively. She had a bit of a cocktail for the show. She's on a few painkillers, among other things. She's a little out of it. What is this painkiller? Very astute and vulgar question, darling. Physical pain can open and close many doors. Don't worry, you don't have to understand. I'm only happy to demonstrate. Now, I remember a few people asking for some hardware fun the other day. Hardware? He's serious. Hey, yeah. So why don't we play another game? As he walked out of view, I felt my head dropping. I feel so heavy. Why are the screens so bright? I jumped at the sound of the motor. I imagined a car or a train. Where is it? What? The drill! Back to your roots! You returned to me searching frantically for whatever machine was about to mow me down. It's a nail gun. He is back to his roots! Most of you have seen this before, yes? A loud bang set my body jumping as much as the shackles would allow. My pounding heart felt like it was going to explode. It's a pneumatic nail gun? He circled around me and pressed the cold metal tip to my shoulder. Do you know what a pneumatic nail gun is, sweetie? I looked up at him, I couldn't seem to focus. It's a tool for firing nails. It's not a f gun. Okay, are we actually gonna be able to answer? I knew the answer on some low, but I couldn't seem to get out. It's a what? A tool? Well, that's close. I'm afraid I can't give you full marks. Wow. Another bang. And a sickening tingling sensation. What? I tried to see my shoulder. The light from the screens caught a metallic tip. And a tiny bead of blood welled, welling around it. Is it a nail? Is it? That's right. I knew it was supposed to hurt, but it felt different. Without the pain, it just felt like something that wasn't supposed to be there. Digging deep in my arm. No. Squirming under my skin. Take it out. Take it. Get it out. I couldn't mask the panic in my voice. It's time for question two. He moved the tip of the gun over my arm, closer to my elbow. What's my name? He's very creepy right now. <laughs> Actually. If one of the answers was Ren, I would gladly answer the question. But he wants me to answer Fox, so that's what his name is. Fox, it's... you said... Aw, oh, you remembered. But unfortunately for you, that's not my real name. Come on, you had to know that. I didn't That's why I asked you again. After the first show. 
He pulled the trigger. My arm was shaking. I wanted to stop. It just made me feel the more. Under my skin. Moving under my skin. Please. Take them out. I hate it. I can't. He wrapped his hand around my arm and squeezed, forcing rivulets of blood from the nails. I could feel every bit of them moving, scraping against bone. I couldn't help but scream. It sounded awful, like someone else. How about an easy one? I made a sound somewhere between a groan and a sob. I, could seem, I couldn't seem to control myself at all. Hey, hey! He grabbed my head and forced me to look at him. Pay attention, okay? Here's your question. What are the last five letters of the alphabet? Huh? I... Oh, that's definitely not one of them. He got up and took his position at my side. I couldn't bear to look. He slid the tip of the gun over my shoulder. Over my other shoulder. Wait, I wasn't... I strained to make my brain work. Z, Y... I can't concentrate. The tip of the gun caressed my shoulder. The sensation of the nails moving deep in my arm was making me feel sick. I couldn't think of anything else. You're too slow. I heard a bang and my blood convulsed as another nail, as another nail lodged in my arm. Oh, the nails. I sagged in my bonds, twitching reflexively. He was talking again. I heard words, but I didn't understand them. Is he asking me another question? He fired another nail into me. Stop. I don't. I can't. He asked another question. I know he must be. Is he asking them? Or me? What's happening right now? Not all on my thigh. He's going to shoot me again. I thrashed, trying to get away. Another nail. And another. Is he laughing? Wait. Is that me? Am I laughing? I felt his hands on my face. Stay with us now. Can you hear me? I panicked at the sound of another question. Yes, yes, I hear. He barked a laugh. I don't have the nail gun anymore. I could hardly concentrate on what he was saying. I could only feel the nails squirming in my muscles burning, burrowing inside me. Eating up my blood. Take them out. Please take them out. Why don't you take them out? I looked up at him questioningly. Questioningly. Here I let here, I'll let you use your hands. I heard the familiar click of the shackles snapping open. My arms fell forward like dead weights. Motion aggravated the nails inside them. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. I can pull them out. I need to pull them out now. It's watching. I tried to lift my arm. It felt like it was made of lead. Trembling, twitching, my hand approached a nail embedded near my elbow. I gingerly pinched the head of the nail in my fingers. Just pull. Just pull it out. I pulled. The sensation of it slipping out from the meat of my arm made me lurch. I could feel it inside me, sliding, parting my flesh. Rough metal against a soft part of me that should never have been touched. I pulled, blood and nail emerging from inside me slowly, agonizingly slowly. Some insane piece of my mind wished I was in pain. Pain is better, simpler. Finally, the tip of the nail slipped out and let, and I let out, let it fall to the floor. I shuddered with relief and revulsion at the same time. Good. Now do the rest. I looked for him, bewildered. I could feel panic hammering at the inside of my chest. Why? Please, can't you? No. I jumped at the sound of his voice behind me. I gulped and tried to steady myself. I can't do it. Just do it faster. I felt along my skin until I found the head of another nail in my shoulder. Fast. Oh my gosh. 
I grasped the nail. Do it, do it, do it, do it! I tore the nail out of myself in one motion. I crumpled into a sob as if as it skittered across the floor. Hot blood trickled down my arm. There you go. It felt so awful, but my arm did feel better. They're gone. I heaved a few deep breaths. They're just nails. Just nails. I shook my head and went back to work. I began pulling the nails out of my skin more quickly. The sick feeling of them sliding around inside me was enough motivation. I pulled them for myself, writhing, pulling, dizzy, blurring. But there was another sensation. The holes the nails left started to feel warm. Warm and tingling. I tore the last nail out of my leg with a moan. Then I slumped forward. My work was finally done. My body was covered in warm spots. Points of light, like little stars. I laughed to myself. What the fuck kind of drugs am I on? A clawed hand snaked around my shoulders to my front. The altered metallic voice spoke right next to my ear. You did so well. My head bobbed dully as the praise sank into my consciousness. I hate me. I did well. The hands moved over my skin, so warm and soft. I sighed out a breath and leaned into the touch. Feels good now, doesn't it? It did feel good. That's what he was saying, right? Why don't you show chat all of your new little holes? Chat? The, the people? That's right. His hands parted my thighs. Show them. Uh, it felt so warm. I wanted to feel more. Like this. He pressed a clawed finger over my over a bloody punctured hole in my thigh. It was soft. The heat of his fingers sent an electric tingle up my leg. I stifled a moan. Some voice afar in the back of my mind told me that told me that was supposed to hurt, but it didn't. It felt so... I moved a shaking finger over another bloody nail hole and pressed down. Okay. The feeling shot up in my other leg. I was starting to breathe harder. Perfect. His voice sounded so good. I immediately shoved the finger into a hole in my arm. The blood was so hot and wet. I couldn't help myself. I jammed another finger in, parting skin, coaxing more blood from the wound. Why does it feel so good? Blood ran down my arm as my hips bucked forward under my under his hands. Is he breathing harder too? You want more? My breath hitched in my chest. I want more. Here. He grabbed my hands and guided them down. He pushed my fingers into the loose pink underwear they dressed me in. Any sense of embarrassment vanished the second I touched the sensitive flesh. It felt so different. I explored myself with my own fingers. I was panting now, hard. I couldn't stop. I bucked involuntarily as claws sank into the puncture wounds on my arms. All I could feel was heat, pressure, friction. No pain at all. Beg for more. I... Uh... Beg. Please. More. Claws clipped down and sank into my flesh. My own bloody hands shook with pleasure against my... I moaned as I... Wrapped by a hazy magnif magnified... I could feel every one of his fingers in my skin, fat and muscle, deep inside of me. I shuddered as the aftershocks of pleasure kept washing over me. Then, his fingers left me. A pathetic, needy sound escaped me as he walked away. The cold air where his body used to be made me shudder. Something isn't right. I know it isn't. Ha! <laughs> you liked that, hmm? Boy, if you don't- See? Didn't I tell you? 
is more than one way to skin. Oh, Neko M has an interesting suggestion. His chuckle sounded like music. You guys are really in the mood for power tools today. Well, you know what I always say. Your wish is my command. He walked somewhere into the darkness. My brain replayed the words power tools over and over. That's bad, isn't it? Isn't it bad? What the f is that? He returned to me holding some new object. Oh my god. <laughs> How exciting. I froze at the sudden burst of light and heat. Neko says you're bleeding a lot. That we should cauterize your little holes. I couldn't fully comprehend what he was saying. I have a little challenge for you too. Do you think you can handle it? Me? That's right. I'm going to leave your hands free. And you're going to keep them down. I looked down at my hands attached to my arms, dead weights. I scoffed. That's easy. He laughed at my response. Is it? Just remember. Or else I'll burn your hands. You don't want that. No, I don't want that. My slurred response felt automatic. Like someone else was speaking for me. A smile crept to the edge of my lips. That's nice. That's easier. I watched him raise a nozzle. Raise the nozzle of the blowtorch to my arm. Oh, this is really cool. Heat and light exploded from the tip. My eyelids fluttered, bewildered. Ooh, what was that? An echo of the sun was burned into my vision. I could blink it away. You may not want to look directly at it, pet. Not if you want your only eye to keep. Not if you want your only eye to keep working. He laughed, and I laughed along with him. Yes, I should look away. It's too bright. The light flashed again, and it felt like... <laughs> I felt the blast of heat. It's so hot. I lifted my hand weakly to touch the hot spot on my arm. Balls clamped around my wrist. Keep your hands down. I gasped at the change in his demeanor. And for some reason I felt ashamed. How did I forget? Sorry. I'm sorry. His claws disappeared and another miniature sun blossomed at the end of my vision. I started to notice a strange smell. It's burning. The light flashed again and again. The smell got stronger. Heat and burning. The little suns. Images of campfires started to dance in my head. My mouth watered in memory of things cooked over a flame. Cool air washed over the hot spots of my body and the darkness returned. How do you feel, darling? Uh... Hungry? <laughs> A familiar fox bark erupted from him. Really? It smells like... Oh? Well, why don't you take a bite? A bite? He gently picked my arm up from the ground and held it up in front of me. I realized the smell was indeed coming from me. Go ahead. That's my arm. Do it. His voice had changed again. That was a command. I have to. I brought my arm up to my face. And I breathed in the intoxicating scent of charred meat. I want to taste it anyway. I opened my mouth and licked the skin. The texture was so rough and the sensation sent sparks through me. I sink my teeth in without another thought. Tingling heat, pressure, even the slick of my own saliva. It made me crazy. I slowly pulled away a chunk of meat with a moan. As I rolled it in my mouth, I felt him press up against me. I chewed and, rel and relished the morsel. I was so hungry. You're so cute. They adore you. They? My gaze settled on the camera in front of me. Your audience. Don't you remember? I swallowed. Chat. 
That's right. They've been watching you this whole time. I looked at the bleeding... Um, I feel like that tea is silent. I look at the bleeding... Devo... In my arm. Something at the back of my mind was screaming. They love watching you bleed. They love watching you fall apart. All your hopes and dreams, all the memories, an entire life spilling out on the floor. Some of them are probably my Did you know that? Something was dripping from my chin. I didn't know if it was blood or tears. I was shaking. They can all see you. I heard a faint click and the shuffling of him removing his mask. I shivered as his lips touched my ear. But only I can smell you. The screaming inside me was scratching at me, trying to escape. Take another bite. I... That's my arm. I... Things clamped down on my collar, stunning me to silence. Without pain, there was only the pressure and the vague sensation of tearing. He thrashed and pulled for a moment, ripping the skin apart viciously. I felt blood spill out from his mouth, still closed over my neck. Then I felt his tongue moving slowly over the wound. Holy. Why did I make that sound? I know this is bad, I know it is. But it's so... I squeezed my eyes shut, trying to ignore it. All I could sense was his tongue, and his heavy breathing. This isn't helping at all. He lapped at my wound a few times before he finally withdrew panting. I sat there, still stunned, as he licked his lips and put his mask back on. He cleared his throat. He seemed almost embarrassed. That's enough. With a quick roll of his shoulders, he turned back to the screens. Well, who's ready for the grand finale? You came here for blood, and blood you shall receive. His demeanor changed again. I couldn't keep track of what was happening. This next little game is very simple. He circled behind me again. I jumped a little when something light fell on my shoulders. Wire? It closed around my neck. Again. A bubble of fear made its way to the front of my mind. He connected the wire loop to the chain above me. What? The wire tightened. I had to strain my shackled legs to raise myself enough to breathe. It seemed nearly impossible with my body feeling so heavy. My head was swimming. Here. Huh? I looked at his offering. I gingerly took it into my hands. A knife. They want to see blood, darling. Blood. They want to see blood. The unspoken agreement materialized in my head. I cut myself and the wire goes away. Right? That's easy. Nothing hurts right now. I slashed the blood sloppily across the top of my thigh. As expected, blood began to seep out from the wound. I looked up expectantly. That's good. But they want to see more. I slashed again, with little concern for my legs. I could barely feel it anyway. No. Huh? Your belly. Deeper. I looked down. Deeper? I touched the point of the knife to the side of my stomach. I knew the wire must be cutting into my neck. My breaths were so shallow. It's like a dream. Just a dream. I pushed the tip inside, filled with wonder at how easy it was. I understand now. They want to see my insides. I dragged the blade across my belly deep through skin, fat, and muscle. I kind of want to see them too. I've never seen them before. I didn't know if it was the drugs or lack of oxygen, but I felt giddy. I dropped the knife and touched the wound I created. My fingertips danced over the edge and slipped inside. It's so warm, and soft, and slippery. Look. I pulled a shape from inside the bloody tish fissure. Tish fissure? 
The pressure and sense of pulling within me was so bizarre. Look, I... Cough interrupted my hoarse whisper. That's okay. I'll just show them. I pulled them from within myself and held up the glistening mass for the camera. Look. The wire around my neck cut off my ability to talk. I realized it cut off my ability to breathe too. My- What's our stats? <laughs> <laughs> my arms dropped and my offering poured out between my legs. I smiled to myself. This is definitely my best show. He's going to be so happy. You were the star of the show. <laughs> that was really nice. Hello, this is another interruption. I do apologize. There is one more after this, though. It just took me a, an embarrassingly long time to complete. But I figured out how to do it. There is this whole, like, art system. So, depending on what you pick, you get a certain amount of points, right? Pretty random, I think. And it took me a really long time to figure that out. I ended up doing this multiple times so that I could pass the show. I thought that it was nearly impossible to pass this. I thought you just had to die, right? That'd be cool for a DLC to be like, oh no, you can't, you just can't beat it. It's, it's no. I w kept repeating the same show over and over again. I kept doing a third show over and over and over, thinking that it was because of what I was choosing. No. Turns out is what I was choosing before the, f before the third show, basically the first and the second show. I had to pick specific things. So I obviously started experimenting with my choices and I ended up, oh, I felt a shift, something pulling my awareness from the deep murk again. Something petting my head. Did I wake you? Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Because we have 10 fox love. Okay, we did it. It did- I think it does carry over. Alright, this is all brand new. My body was so heavy. There you are. You've been sleeping so long I was a little worried you'd slipped into a coma. I looked at him, panic rising. But I couldn't seem to speak. Shh, relax. No show today. Those words sent a wave of relief through my body. I've gotten you all fixed up. They couldn't save your eye, but it's been prepared for a prosthetic. I barely remembered my eye. I reached up and to touch it automatically, and I recoiled with a gasp as I felt nothing there. Don't fiddle with it. It needs to heal more. You are so amazing. I have to tell you again. I'm so sorry. Something. Something about what he said. A prosthetic? Oh, answers. I'm gonna save it because we finally got to a good part. Um, why would you help me? Why would you even bother fixing my eye if you're just going to kill me? My voice came out as a croak. He looked down at me for a moment before answering. Your shows have been very popular. It seems that my audience adores you. They're begging to see more. But they're fickle too. You may not live to see that prosthetic. He chuckled softly. Better to be prepared, just in case. I relaxed slightly and started to look at him more closely. As I focused, I realized I'd never seen his skin before. He's covered in... It's rude to stare, you know. You're so f amazing. I, want I hastily tore my gaze away from his scars and fitted it nervously. He let out a quiet, lighthearted chuff. It's fine. You're on a lot of drugs. Probably won't even remember this anyway. Who are you to say? I'm going to say, were you in shows too? 
in shows. Ah, as the star. I suppose you could say that. I've seen a bit of hell, yes, like you. He pushed a bit of hair from my face in surprising, a surprisingly gentle gesture. Uh, but I guess it's time for me to go. There's always business to attend to. You are so... Oh my goodness. Wait. Hmm? Are you going to kill me or not? Never mind. Because he is being really nice right now, so it's like... What else am I gonna say? Are you going to kill me or not? <laughs> it's not that funny. Well, that's up to chat, isn't it? I thought you were the one in charge. Uh oh, did that make you upset? Get some rest. Before I knew it, he was gone. And I was all alone again in an empty room. I tried to think about what happened, but the mist in my mind closed in again. And I drifted back to sleep. We're back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is gonna be impossible. How do I cater to chat and him at the same time? I waited for him to continue speaking. You don't need to worry about anything for now. The crowd loves you. So I'm having you properly taken care of. You might as well enjoy your break and the painkillers. Painkillers. That must be why everything is so foggy. That was the dialogue for if you don't say anything after, you know, interacting with them. After that scene plays, that's how you know you got a certain amount of points. But it doesn't exactly solidify your ending because you could t still die. You know, it did happen. You have to accumulate a certain amount of points for him, like they're called like Ren points or whatever, or Fox points, in order for him to, in order for you to win the level or to pass the show. But yeah, I will put on the screen in a like right about now what choices I made from the first show, from the very first show that led me to, I guess, the good ending of this, the DLC. So yeah, I apologize for like the whole like not having the recording of show two and the, the confusingness. But yeah, that's this these are the choices I made from show one because it depends on what you make what the choices you make in show one and two that determine how you live in show three. Wait. We're here. We're here. My hand immediately froze. I looked up at him, knife still inside me waiting for my next instruction. But he just stood there. He turned to, this, to his screens. No, of course not. Your wish is my... Actually... That. Chill's over. The screen suddenly went dark. I can't see. I felt something grab the knife out of my hands and throw it across the room. I gasped as the wire suddenly released and I fell forward onto my knees. I took in a few ragged breaths as the wire was pulled away from my neck. Dizzy and confused, I felt the shackles around my ankles open. I was pushed onto my back. What's happening? Why did you stop the- Shut up. Stop talking. I heard a knock at the heavy door. You hit the call button, sir. Medics, now. I have two here. The abdomen. Stop the bleeding. I want her alive. This one is mine now. Are you f- Are you serious? I literally... 
Um, hello. This is still 